building a fort to guard San Francisco, the construction of Fort Point. In 1850, a group of Army and Navy officers was asked to create a plan for the defense of the West Coast and San Francisco Bay. They recommended building forts at the site of the old Spanish Castillo de San Joaquin on the southern side of the Straits and on Alcatraz Island, with additional gun batteries at Angel Island and at Point San Jose, now called Fort Mason. In 1851, Congress approved $500,000 to start building Fort Point. The new installation was called Fort Winfield Scott, but over time, it was called the Fort at Fort Point, until gradually the name was simplified to Fort Point. The first great task was to reduce the bluff on which the Castillo stood at 90 feet above sea level to about 10 feet above the high water mark. The only part of the old Castillo that was left was the rear wall of an outbuilding south of the old adobe fort. The soil and rocks left from blasting away the bluff was mostly distributed along the beach on the bay side of the point, creating the road that leads up to the fort. In January 1855, the Army reported that by June 30th of that year, they expected to have spent half of their budget. They asked Congress for an additional $750,000 for the next year, stating that wages and everything else were high in California. In fact, looking at Army records of wages for everyone from common laborers to skilled builders and engineers, we see that hourly wages were three to five times higher than they were in any other part of the country. The highest paid skilled workers were making about $10 an hour, while unskilled laborers could earn between $2 and $2.50 an hour. In today's dollars, that's equal to a low of $52 to a high of $258 per hour. Blacksmiths, carpenters, and masons were paid on a sliding scale in between those two rates. By March, a trench 18 to 20 feet deep and 9 feet wide had been dug, in which granite blocks were being laid in cement to form the foundation of the fort. Granite from both China and California was piled up and being worked into the proper shapes. Inside the foundation, giant cisterns or stone tanks were being built to store water. In October 1857, 240 men were working building the fort. Many of them were ex-miners who had come to California during the gold rush. By that time, most of the jobs in the mines had dried up, and living expenses being what they were, they were happy to have the work building the new fort, even with the cold, harsh climate surrounding this point. These so-called 49ers weren't soldiers, but civilians working under the direction of Army engineers. In June 1858, about 200 workers were still employed at the site. Over the years of construction, millions of pressed bricks were made in brickyards on the hill to the south of the fort and used to construct the thick walls. Thousands of tons of granite were brought to the site from China and the rock quarries around California. Several thousand people, from laborers to highly skilled craftsmen and engineers, combined forces to build the structure we see today. The fort was mostly completed in 1861, just at the beginning of the Civil War, at a total cost of about $2,800,000. The construction of the granite seawall, about 2,000 feet in length, cost an additional $400,000 and took another nine years to complete. In today's dollars, those total costs would be about $54.5 million. If you would like to know more about the architecture of Fort Point, have a look at one of the other videos in this program called Arches, Tiers, and Spiral Staircases, The Architecture of Fort Point.